go. All right, so consumer math, this is probably, I, I've said this like three times now, maybe this time will be correct. This is gonna be the last lesson in unit three. I can't, I can't think of anything else that I wanna talk about. So we're gonna be moving on to other stuff for the next week. Um, close ended mutual funds and exchange traded funds, so ETFs. So I just want you guys to understand the advantages of each of them. Remember that 3-11, I was back in Thursday, Gunnar is obviously laughing at something else. Um, last Thursday, we talked about um, an open-ended mutual fund. And just as a, we'll do a little bit of review here to get us started. So some review. Um, so the way that an open-ended mutual fund worked, mutual fund was again um, we're going to use Edder for example Edder went to the FTC um, he did all the paperwork he he did all the stuff that you're supposed to do he advertised he got people to buy into his mutual fund but the problem with an open-ended mutual fund I'm going to go ahead and do my diagram again where I have my my amount of money that I have over here and split up into however many of these pieces. Um, let's say the editor has, let's make it a nice number, $1,000 for his net asset value or NAV. Is it that? Um, I'm feeling like I'm missing an acronym. Shoot, what was our acronym from the other day? Let's go over here to unit three, 3-11. What was our acronym that we're using again? That's your net asset value per share. I'm trying to remember of the, I guess that's the right one. I was thinking of a different one. Um, yeah, I don't remember. So I'm just gonna go net asset value. Um, so that is our net asset value, NAV. The problem though is, there, there's two problems. I'll talk about them. So the problems. Um, the problems, first, editor, you can only make trades at the end of the day. Make trades at the end of the day. Which is unfortunate because if you see your, your stocks starting to do really badly and you want to pull out, you have to wait until the end of the day or vice versa. If you really want to buy them, you're like, I know that Tesla is going to go up in an hour. I need to buy it now. You're out of luck because you can only make trades at the end of the day. But why? Um, it's because of the people that are investing of you, which brings you to problem number two, which kind of are beating off of each other. Um, the second problem is that... Um, you have to keep a little amount of money. So not all of the $1,000 can be put into the stock market. You have to keep a bit of it liquid because what if person A wants their money back? If they want to say, hey, give me my, I don't know, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. If we have five people, um, this is $200. It's your net asset value divided by the amount of the quantity of stocks. So person A wants their $200 back at her. Well, you have to give them their $200 back. The problem is it's invested into a stock and it's it takes a long time for you to get that money back into money and then give it to person A. So what you have as a strategy for your open-ended mutual fund is a little bit of this money is always liquid. You're not allowed to invest all of your $1,000 just in case people need their money back. So that's your second problem. The second problem is that not all NAV, not all of your net asset value can be invested. Invested. Some has to be liquid. So some, and liquid is just a word that means it has to be money, it can't be a stock. Some has to be a liquid. Okay, well, one of these problems can be fixed by having a closed ended mutual fund. So let's talk about a closed ended mutual fund. Close ended mutual fund. A closed ended mutual fund basically says, hey, you're not allowed to take your, your stock out. Um, this, this share here, these are the shares. 
whenever you want to buy your share back or if you want to exchange your share for your $200, the answer is no. What you have to do as the customer who has bought into Edder's plan, now that Edder has switched over to a closed mutual fund, person A has to find a separate person, their cousin Bob or whatever, and they say, hey, Bob, do you want this share? It's only $200 and Edder's really cool. He knows what he's doing. He was first place in the virtual stock market in high school. His cousin Bob says, yeah, sure, I'll buy that $200 share from you. And it, the, the action for changing money for share happens on the customer's end. So Edder doesn't have to worry about it. The cool thing about that is Edder now can invest basically 100% of his net asset value into his stocks, bonds, uh, whatever it is that he's investing into. So the main difference here is um, the shares are traded. So if the stock market starts going down and you want to take your money out, you can't? It depends. Unless you get someone. <laughs> because the way that the, this is a mutual fund, which is, it's very similar to a stock market, but the, even the way that the stock market works is if you sell a stock on the stock market, someone has to buy it. It's always a, a person to person transaction. It doesn't go back into some general fund. If you want to sell a stock and there's no one there that wants to buy it, you're out of luck. You're stuck with that stock, which is <laughs> what happened to Mr. Sindel in the virtual stock market. I shorted a penny stock um, and I couldn't buy to cover my penny stock. So I was stuck for like a week and I lost, what was it like 50% of my money because no one would want me. I, I couldn't buy to trade or I couldn't buy to cover. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always person to person. You might be stuck with it. And it's, it's now the same case with our, your close ended mutual fund. Um, there's no um, fluid amount of money. There's no like general fund that you can say, Hey, give me my money back. Um, that's your close edit. So tr uh, shares are traded. Um, editor doesn't have to worry. We'll say editor doesn't have to worry. Worry about liquidity. I can't spell about liquidity. So that solves one of the problems, but it doesn't solve the first problem of you can only make trades at the end of the day, Edder. And just in case this isn't specific enough, I'm thinking if Mr. Sindel sees this in like five years, because I am dusting off my notes, uh, what I mean by, by traded here is um, customer to customer. Customer, or I should say investor instead of customer. It doesn't really matter, but I want to be specific. So investor to investor. Invest or to investor. Okay, so that's a little bit cooler, but it's still, yeah, as I said, it doesn't solve the first problem. So there is a way to solve the first problem though. There is a way to make it so that you uh, can make trades whenever you want. Um, and that brings us to exchange traded funds. So ETFs, which is kind of the best of both worlds. So ETFs which I'm, I'm only 90% sure of this. It stands for exchange traded funds. I'm gonna look this up to make sure I'm not teaching you something wrong. Traded funds. Again, I watched this video over the weekend, so I don't, don't quite remember. Exchange traded funds. Yeah, ETFs. Cool, I got it right. Um, the, the shortcut that I have for you is it's uh, a mixture of both a mix of close and open ended funds, ended mutual funds. Oh, I forgot um, one more thing, sorry, about close ended funds is it also causes a third problem, a, a new problem. So, um, I, I don't know where to add this. Sorry, you guys are gonna have to kind of squeeze this in. I have technology so I can like move stuff down. Um, the, the new problem that's caused is no new people, no new investors can invest. 
basically what that means is editor you have decided hey i have exactly 10,000 shares and that's all i've got if i have another new person's like i want to buy another thousand shares you're like oh my god that would be amazing i would make so much money i would have a, a higher net asset value i would make that one percent of that higher money like that's awesome you're out of luck you have a fixed amount of shares and you cannot add or divide or do anything to those shares that is a fixed number of shares which is the reason that you don't have to worry about liquidity now it is a set amount of money that is in your portfolio um, and again the the etf this will solve that issue as well so the exchange traded funds are awesome because one they're, they're public so they're public and new investors can invest so that kind of is better than the closed ended mutual fund. But the cool thing is part two, the, the, the big difference between the two is um, you, you buy slash sell. And when I say sell, really that means just make it liquid, right? You buy or sell in, I should really say large blocks, large blocks of shares. So the idea here being, okay, um, editor again has, let's, let's have an example. Um, our example is down here. Let's make it a, a more realistic example. So a lot more money. Let's go ahead and assume we have editor. You are now doing really well for yourself. You have a hundred thousand um, dollars in your, for your net asset value in NAV. And that is divided between like a thousand different shares. So we'll say there's just a bunch of lines over here. There's a total here of 1000 shares. Because you're an ETF now, editor, or because you operate this ETF, um, companies or investors, it's typically companies because it's so hard to do, can only buy or sell blocks of like a hundred shares at a time. So you could say that this giant amount of block, maybe that 200 shares here belongs to company A. Company A owns that, um, that 200 shares and maybe company B owns like 300 shares, 300, 300 shares for company B, 200 shares for company A. It's nice because you can still have basically all of your money invested and then once Company A is like, hey, I need to get that money out. Then you're like, okay, I'm going to take that giant amount of money and then I can make that liquid. It takes a little bit longer, um, whatever. But there's no, I mean, you, you probably still want a little bit, but you don't really need any reserve uh, money for your net asset value because people aren't constantly trading and uh, constantly wanting their stocks liquid every single day. Because you want to think about this, like with your traditional uh, open-ended mutual fund, you would have like 10 individual people that were trying to turn their, or get liquid, get their money, <laughs> turn it into like actual money instead of an investment. That happens every single day. It's annoying for you editor to have to manage like, oh my gosh, how do I make sure that I have enough money here that's liquid so that I can constantly keep up with people trying to buy and sell. And it's a pain in the neck over here. It's not a pain because if they have a giant block, they're not going to want to do this every single day. It's much less likely that they're going to be um, trying to turn their funds into to actual cash to, to liquidize their, their money, to, their, or sorry, to, what's the correct term that I wanna use here? To make their shares liquid, to actually have cash. So this is generally what's better if you are in charge of, do I want open uh, mutual fund or closed mutual fund? You probably want an exchange traded fund. The harder part about this, I guess the, the one negative part is it's harder for people to buy it. Not your average Joe can say, <laughs> I want to buy uh, twenty thousand dollars of your your shares, editor. It's you need really big investors to come in. You have to be kind of well known to establish your exchange your exchange traded fund. And we are now done talking about types of mutual funds. Do you guys have questions at all? All right. Cool, I'll finish the recording up here.